Hi everyone, Selena Woodward here from Edufolios. As I am every Thursday, got the day right this week, every Thursday at 7 p.m. Adelaide time, I'm here to talk to you about whatever it is we've been discussing in the podcast and to answer any questions that I've received in between the two. So this week's podcast, which you can find at edufolios.org forward slash 004, was all about failing. In fact, it was quite a personal one because I was talking about my need to be more open with the idea of trying things that I know are difficult for me, of making mistakes and being okay to talk about those mistakes in my edufolio. And in that podcast, I talked a lot about why I think it's really important to fail and why it's really important to show your colleagues, your students, and anyone who's visiting your ePortfolio that you do make mistakes, and most importantly, that you know how to learn from those mistakes. Failure is not always a negative thing. And in fact, with the big push of the growth mindset with our students in our classrooms, that's why it becomes hypocritical if we believe that we want our children, our students to demonstrate where they make mistakes and make progress. But we're not okay with sharing things that go wrong for us. And we're not okay with identifying weaknesses and being honest and open about that. It's really important that we practice what we preach, or at least that's what I believe personally. Failure, as we've always heard many times, is a first attempt in learning. We spoke a lot about this in episode 001. If you remember in that first episode, I taught you about goal setting. And part of that goal setting was to connect with some of those gut feelings you had about things that didn't go well and to then work out why that had happened so that you could set yourself a meaningful target that would help you make progress. I thought it was the perfect time to bring up this topic of failure again, because around now we're probably getting ready to write another post possibly. If we set a, a target four or five weeks ago, then really we should be thinking now about coming back to our portfolio and writing an update. Where have you got to? And if you're thinking, actually, I've just been surviving for the past five weeks. I can't even believe we're in that week right now. It's gone so quickly. That's cool. Let's reflect on that. Let's talk about what you've done instead, what's been distracting you, and let's bring ourselves back to the goal that you have set. In fact, this week, I actually talked about setting yourself a goal that might be so big that you're really frightened that you might fail at it. Being brave enough to set yourself a target or a goal that actually scares you enough because you're afraid it's a bit unrealistic. Why did I do that? Because if you always talk about the things that you do well and you limit yourself to the things you do well, your world is very small. And the whole purpose of reflective practice is to expand our world and expand our knowledge so that we become better practitioners, right? So we should set ourselves a goal that scares us a little bit. I talked about this, about taking risks. Now, I'm not talking about doing something really daft and really silly and scary. Obviously not. Use your common sense. Professionally, I mean, pick something that you are not sure you can do and be okay with the fact that you might not get there but that along the way, with every time you fail and you make a mistake, you are going to make a massive leap in progress. That's what I mean. So right now, even if your edufolio, your portfolio has gaps in it, let's set ourselves a goal of going for the next career stage within six to 12 months. That could be highly accomplished, it could be lead, it could be proficient, it could be graduate if you've just started at uni or you're in your few years at uni. Let's set ourselves a goal and let's fail our way to it. And let's see what we learn along the way, okay? So we can either look back at the goals we made a few weeks ago or go, right, I'm gonna be brave. Here's what I'm gonna try. And let's see what I learn along the way. What's important is our mindset around failure and understanding that making mistakes is really important and being able to connect with that mistake is the way that you will make the biggest growth 
which will of course increase the impact that you have on your students, your colleagues, your site, depending on what career stage you're at. Okay, we've got to bring it back to reflection. I also talked in the podcast about perfection. Now I am a massive fan of Mary Poppins. Anyone else a big fan of Mary Poppins? I'm a vegetarian. I, I do attribute that possibly to the fact that there are always animals in Disney movies talking to me. Mary Poppins has those cute little penguins and all sorts. I love Mary Poppins. One of the things I love most about Mary Poppins, apart from that amazing bag that she can carry everything in, is that when she measures herself, she, even Mary Poppins is only practically perfect in every way. Even Mary Poppins knows that perfection doesn't exist. That made me feel better. I don't know about you. She's obviously an important woman in my life. <laughs> perfection in a classroom is non-existent, especially when you think about every person in that room and their expectation of what perfection is. It's going to be different. And then when you factor in that we're talking about maybe 32 different humans and different parents and different relationships, it becomes even more complex. It becomes a lot of pressure, doesn't it? Perfection. And it can become a barrier. So that's why at Edufolios, we don't believe in perfection. Instead, we believe in something called reflection. Oh. And we even have a new phrase that we invented. I'll show you the little sticker here, look. This is our phrase that we invented. Hopefully the computer will zoom in in a minute and show you. A reflectionist, a passionate learner that reflects on their practice to achieve professional growth. That is the cornerstone of what we do here at Edufolios. That's what we believe as educators we should all be striving to do. Loads of you who have an Edufolio will have got one of these stickers on your edifolio because you've completed the reflectionist challenge. Well done you, congratulations. And I want you to remember that reflectionism is much better than perfectionism. Reflectionism is about being a great professional and always wanting to grow. And that is why leadership, parents, whoever may come across these posts are going to respect the fact that you are striving to be the chief learner in your classroom and that that is really important to you. I wrote a post like this a little while ago where I was teaching a workshop and I just got to the end and you know that horrible knotted stomach feeling that you might get when things are just going so wrong and you just, it's just no saving it, it's derailed and you're doing your best and look I get that, occasionally that happens to all of us, okay, that's because perfection doesn't exist. But I managed to write a really awesome reflection at the end of that where I was very honest about what had gone wrong and why. I managed to learn a lot about what I could do differently next time. And that is our goal. So if the idea of failure worries you, makes you feel like you would be less of a professional for doing things a little differently, taking risks and getting things wrong, then please listen to this week's podcast, edufolios.org 004, where we go into this in a lot of detail. We've already had some comments on that page and please add your comments either under this video or over there on that blog post. Next week, I'm going to be addressing one of the questions that came up last week in the live. I've actually done an entire podcast answering the problem that you gave me, which was how do I find time to reflect? And what on earth should I be writing about as I go? I go blank and I don't know what to write about, how to start. So in next week's podcast, I give you a plan to make sure that you have a, a, a timetable of when you're going to reflect and you know exactly what you're going to talk about. I reveal five different ways to find content subjects that you can reflect on so that by the end of that podcast, you have got everything you need to fill up that content calendar, set yourself the time that you need to do it, and nail that portfolio really quickly. All right, so that's next week. It comes out next Wednesday. But this week, let's talk about failing. All right, I want you to share stories around what you've learned this week that didn't go well and why. Thank you very much for listening. Head over to edufolios.org forward slash 004 for more, and I'll see you again next week. Take care.